the museum back to life. You know, people sit out on the front porch hoping people will come by. Go forth and do good. It's insane. I have the most understanding wife in the world. I treat everybody the same thing. Oh, that's the other thing I love about Marietta. It's like a melting pot. You are listening to Marietta Stories. Each week, veteran podcaster Bill Nowicki brings you the heartwarming, interesting, and fun stories from the people that make the community of Marietta, Georgia, a place to call home. Here's your host, Bill Nowicki. Welcome, everybody. This is Bill Nowicki, and Laura Ferrer and her husband run The Third Door. You can go to the thirddoor.net to learn more about their location on Church Street, one of the most popular bars in Marietta. It's a really cool vibe, and you're just going to have to check it out, so do that. And also, go to visitmarietta.ga.com to learn more about all the great things that are going on in Marietta. I love Marietta. I know you will, too. Just go to visitmarietta.ga.com. Here's Laura Ferrer and my friend, and my friend, Paul Southern, who came along for the interview. We have Laura Ferreira, and she's the owner. Yes, yes correct. I, 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 I am. <laughs> All right. So, uh, third door is winner of the Cobb's Best, the 2021 new bar. New bar in 2021. It's very popular. I've come here a few times. Has a really cool vibe, uh, speakeasy type vibe. But I want to know your story a little bit, Laura. Tell me about how you ended up here. Thank you. It's a. Uh, it's kind of and welcome. A, <laughs> welcome to you. I'm great. Really happy to have y'all here. Convoluted story how we got here, but the short version is that we love music festivals. We love old things. My husband and I have renovated a number of houses together. He comes from the design and architecture um, profession. Well, we started by collecting trailers. We uh, love going to music festivals, too old to sleep in a tent on the ground. Got our first vintage travel trailer about 12 years ago and discovered that there's this great whole subculture of vintage travel trailer nerds who fix up old trailers and show them and build community around it. Yeah, and there's a couple teardrop style here. There are. Um, so one of them on the patio is a happier camper and it's a new trailer meant to have a vintage kind of vibe to it. And so the first step that we took was we, as kind of a side hustle, became the Southeastern sales reps for selling those. They're new campers out of California. So we really are a travel trailer showroom. <laughs> Speakeasy. So the, not, the non-traditional method has always been your your thing or how did you kind of get to that point I, yes non-traditional definitely describes us we met at, in college at theater school ted was doing lighting design i was doing stage management and acting and i'm still managing and he's still lighting things ah, um cool. so yeah it was just a, a fun thing that we wanted to do um music um, festivals creativity want to be around creatives blah 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 mm -hmm. and love building community uh we we've lived right around the corner for 20 years we built what we wanted to have, some place where people feel welcome and can forget their worries, forget their concerns, enjoy some music, be with friends. What, what about the vintage part, the older? Why, why do you think you're drawn to that? Old things just have so much character, so and, and they were built well, so the materials are really solid and really good. And we even tried to do that in recreating this room that you're in. You know, we wanted to use real wood, real velvet curtains. Those are both acoustically <laughs> important, but also just the aesthetics of making things with an eye for how, how they're made. All right, Paul. Paul Southern is back from season uh, five. Back and on the air, holding right. a separate microphone from you. But uh, you mentioned old things. Well, Bill's almost sixty. And, oh uh, God! You had to bring that up. He's built pretty well. He's held up in his uh, his old old man years. Oh boy! I just wanted to throw that in. Go ahead right. and continue. Oh well, thanks. You threw me off, Paul. <laughs> that's I'm, no, my, I'm that's, just that's my gift. No, so uh, you love vintage things, you love music festivals. How on earth did you, did you ever start a business or how did you get into this particular business? For 30 years, we ran an architectural lighting design firm oh, together and Ted is still 
has that day job. I left that firm about five years ago, went back to school because I'd always wanted to and uh, thought that I was going to go into a day job of, of some sort. But this build, this business was kind of taking off, ramping up, and I built it in, in, instead of, of um, getting a nine to five. So uh, how did you get involved with the ownership of this? The campers are what started it. We started by selling the Happier Campers, and then we discovered through that community that there is actually an industry of people who use those for selling anything. Um, we started by just taking it to Pont City Market. It was Santa's sleigh. Then we happened upon a gig where it, we gave out um, Doritos and salsa at the um, Tostitos, not Doritos. Let me get my brand right. It was Tostitos and salsa at the Super Bowl when it was here in Atlanta. And that just gave us the wild idea of let's turn this into a bar. And so we turned it into a mobile bar. We started taking it to weddings, corporate events, and it, it snowballed from there. We gathered three more trailers. And so that was the first part of the business. And it's still our t sister business. So the Third Door and Temperance trailers are sister companies. And Temperance is now the mobile arm of the Third Door. So we go to weddings and block parties and corporate, so cool. corporate parties. What do you love about the speakeasy vibe and all that? I love seeing people in this place having fun. We knew that there would be people getting married here, getting engaged here. And sometimes I'll be sitting outside listening to the music, just sitting in the back like I like to do. And I'll see people dancing or laughing with their friends. And it, and it, really, it really touches me to think, wow, I, I can't believe I created this place where people are having this much of a good time, this much joy. We're all about community, aren't we, Paul? All about community. And well, yeah, that's what we talked about that on a couple yeah. of our podcasts in the past. And uh, yeah, getting people together, having fun and watching people have fun. You know, that's got to be. Yeah. And it's, a, it's short supply these days, too. It's hard to come by in our society. Which one? Fun? <laughs> community. 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 It's hard to come by. <laughs> I had a question. Is it, can ahead. I pop one in here? I was noticing on, on the ceiling here, you have pallets nailed to the ceiling, which is pretty cool. And oh. uh, it reminded me when I was walking around you know, the neighborhood where I live, someone was using pallets as a fence. That's actually pretty a neat design. Who came up with that one? So Ted came up with this idea, and you're right. People are using repurposed old sh actual shipping pallets for all kinds of purposes. Uh, so these are acoustic panels. So that's recycled, some sort of recycled fiber that is backing the pallets. And when we first came into this room, you could snap your fingers and it would echo across yeah. this room. Yes. But we right. knew we wanted... It's pretty dead. Pretty dead is what we're going for. Yeah, so the, the ceiling panels help, uh, the curtains help, all the wood in the room is meant to soak up that sound so you can have music in here and have it sound good. Well, not only that, but people, if you have so much echo and you have so many people, you can't even hear the people across the table from you. Very true. Yep. So that's cool. Down the same side of the street all the way at the end, I'm not going to mention it, but the first time I went in there, it's a nice place, first time I went in there, brick walls, there was nothing on the walls or very little, and you couldn't hear yourself talk yeah. because there was so much bouncing back and forth going on. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. So back to you're trying to create a community uh, space for folks. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've driven by, walked by, and saw a bunch of people outside having a good time. Uh, is this kind of your dream? It is. I didn't know it was my dream, uh, but now that we're here, it's um, it's fulfilling in a way that I never knew. And you know, we we did meet at theater school, so I kind of feel like I've always been doing theater. You know, I was lying on the ground jacking up a trailer at a wedding one time, and I went, "Wow, I'm still doing theater." It's like getting the show up. So it's kind of a part of a convoluted path, but it really feels like a dream. Yeah, and I bet when you're there for people's weddings and all that, and being a integral part of that special day must be important to you too it is it's it's uh, it's fun and meaningful it makes you feel so happy uh there was a couple who we didn't know it um they it was spur of the moment he proposed to his now fiance in the camper that you can reserve outside and she said yes and the whole place cheered and we passed around champagne and um and now they're doing their engagement shoot here 
because it's a part of their story. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's priceless. Yeah. So what's uh, the future for you in this business? Are you con- going to continue to do both things that the mobile and uh, keep the third door? If you've ever been charged with a crime, well, you know you're in a crisis situation. And if I were you, I'd contact Kim Fry and the rest of the folks at the Fry Law Group, 170 Anderson Street here in Marietta, Georgia. They will take good care of you. And like me, she listens to your story. She understands your story and asks good questions so she can give you the best result possible. Our law system in this country is adversarial. So you need someone on your side that fights for you. And Kim has many, many positive five-star ratings on Google, 69 to be exact. Contact Kim Fry and the Fry Law Group, 170 Anderson Street, Marietta, 770-919-9525. Or you can go to their website, frylawgroup.com. That's F-R-Y-E lawgroup.com. You know, when John Sylvie reached out to me to be a sponsor of Marietta Stories podcast, I jumped at the chance. I love the guy. He's a humanitarian. He's a small business owner. He's a franchise owner, and he cares so much about Marietta. I got him on the show last year. I was not disappointed. He works hard every day. He only sleeps like three to four hours a day. Why? Because he's got a lot to do to make Marietta better, and he does a lot right at the Zaxby's. 591 South Marietta Parkway. Go check it out and tell them Bill Nowicki sent you. We are. You know, the, the mobile aspect has a good room to grow and to and to continue to just share what we're about and be a part of people's celebrations. Yeah. It's a great way to way to grow, great way to employ folks. Paul, do you have anything else you wanted to add? I do. Is this a good time? To this is a good time. It's perfect. This room that we're sitting in, it appears to be a former bay for mechanics working on cars. The name of the gas station back then, it was it Sinclair? What was it? It was. So the Sinclair gas station was where the Marietta Station parking lot is now. And this was McPherson's service station and they had a tire business um, behind us where the brickyard is and um, I believe that the the service station was kind of ancillary but it was the the brickyard tire uh, sales and distribution that was really the core of of their business and so we're still with the McPherson family our our landlady is um, the daughter of McPherson himself and his family so this is uh, worth 50s 40s Yes, it uh, started in the 30s, okay. yeah, 30s, okay. 40s. So other question was, before we started our podcast, we were talking about this. Which tonight, you're doing a uh, liquor tasting, is that what you call it? Mm-hmm. And so every Wednesday, we do you do something here, right? So it's not every Wednesday. It's not every Wednesday. Um, we're aiming for every other Wednesday, but, you know, getting our guest speakers in and, okay. and scheduling and all of that. So once or twice a month. We call them Wise Up Wednesdays. Wise Up Wednesdays. Okay, so the question I had was, there's actually a way to drink liquor. And you were telling us, like, for example, gin. gin. Mm-hmm. You just don't drink, drink gin straight out of the glass. I mean, you can, but the right right way to do it is... So, yeah, so I didn't didn't know this. With uh, When I did our Wise Up Wednesday focusing on gin, you... You smell it first, kind of get a sense, because with gin, they've got the botanicals. Uh, Sometimes there's that juniper that's the classic gin. So you smell it a little bit, then you get a tiny, tiny little taste, feel it on your gums. And then you actually add a little bit of water to it to dilute it just a little bit. And then you can taste it and get the flavors, because gin is such high alcohol. Otherwise, you're just getting a, a mouthful of alcohol. So yes. then you can get some of the flavors okay. with that. So that would be an example of what you might do tonight. Right. right? What else mm-hmm. What else would you might do? Experiment with some other mm-hmm. liquors. What else would you do? Well, so tonight we have Katie from Heaven Hill who's coming and talking about some of the different labels that they carry. It'll be a lot, lot of whiskey focus tonight. You get to learn how these spirits are made, how they're distilled, what gives them the flavors that they have, how you, how you differentiate between different brands, different spirits. You get to try it in a couple of cocktails. And what's the fee? So it's $45. Okay. So you get, and you get your tasting, your education, three 
cocktails, three of small cocktails, three full size cocktails would put you out. But uh, okay. and dinner. Oh, I have wow. for forty five. Oh, and dinner. I was going to ask mm-hmm. you about food. That's my second question. So the other question is: speaking of spirits and the age of this building, mm-hmm. any hauntings or reports <laughs> of? We haven't heard any stories, but I would love to have the ghost tours folks come in yeah, and well, help us create some. You know, we could make one up. <laughs> we could. I would. I, I mean, half the ghost stories around on the tour are probably made up anyway. I, but, stay uh, on that, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other question. So the other question you brought up was food. So mm-hmm. I was. There's yeah. there's food. Food has been one of our challenges. Our space is so small, we don't even have a kitchen, which causes issues uh, with with actually complying with um, health code standards in order to be able to serve food. So we're still in the process of getting a more robust menu, but we just started last week offering some heavy appetizers, working with Micah, formerly of the Butcher the Baker, and they're creating a new restaurant space over connected with their session stand oh. space. Um, so so having some heavy appetizers, something that goes well with, with a cocktail. And one thing we have done for the past year is we have free chips. Zapp's potato chips, something that Ted and I discovered, one of our favorite music places in New Orleans. That's the only food they have. You want some food, you, grab, you get a bag of Zapp's. So that's a, a nod to DBA. And, okay, so this big barrel quarter. of potato chips is, is always there and it's full. Yep. That's nice. Complimentary. Classy, snacks. classy touch. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Marietta. You've been here, you've lived here for a while. Where's your go-to place? It's a Friday night and uh, you don't feel like cooking. What do you do? <laughs> so we, we do, I, of course, uh, we, we start here, we have music on Friday nights, so we'll usually come here for a cocktail and then grab dinner on the square. And we really, I don't want to sound too wishy-washy, but we like to spread it around. We love all of the places on the square. So we, we go to Stockyard a lot, we go to Max, we go to Sia del Toro, the new red hair space is fun, Piastra, when we have family in town, I mean, we just, I love the square, I love what everyone's doing to continue. All right, what's your favorite venue that you would go listen to music in Marietta? Well, I, I'm, hmm, this one is Besides it. here. <laughs> but I mean like a bigger space. Mm-hmm. Um, a uh, bigger space. I love the Roxy at uh, um, at Battery Park. Yeah. That's fun. I've seen a couple of great concerts there. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, the Strand. The good Strand place to go. Is- did I mention that I bought four tickets to see the Allman Brothers in October at the Strand? You did. I did. Good VIP for you. tickets, brother. Wow. Good. Anyway, for you. Uh, the Allman Brothers. Well, you know, <laughs> it's 500 people see seats in that stadium. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that uh, arena. Or arena building and uh so the allman brothers are old and they can't fill up uh stadiums anymore but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's the root cause maybe they like the smaller places that strand is a fantastic venue i love it and the lumier lounge is is fun place to go for a relaxed evening yeah and i think you know just drawing people to marietta is going to help everybody and i know uh you have a great business here it was a very difficult place to be really a few years ago because you were kind of a little bit removed from the square but you've really created a great environment for people to come and hang out and create community now how do people get a hold of you folks it we're on facebook and instagram you can look for the third door on social media and follow us there and that's how we mostly keep folks up to date with our classes and with our music on the weekends Uh, we have a website all spelled out the third door dot net Cool. And there's a happenings calendar on the website that will always keep you up to date. Okay, great. So, Paul, last question. I saw Laura and Kroger yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before? And you were telling me, I asked you about the origin of the word, the two words, the third door, the three words. Mm-hmm. So, did you ask her that yet? Mm-hmm. Oh. So, That's you, uh, why you're here, Paul. Pretty cool, pretty cool uh, in the story. Holes. Go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, you do have some great questions, Paul. Um, That's what I do for a living. <laughs> 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 the third door was the name of a speakeasy in a uh, murder mystery. And now I'm racking my brain and I can't remember the author's name. But we just thought, wow, that has just such a great classic speakeasy kind of ring to it. It also is a little bit of a nod to our space. 
we don't have a password, we don't have a phone booth, but you do have to know how to get in, and, and that's the fun challenge. Um, folks in the know know that you come to the back door at the third door. One door is on the patio, another door is the garage, but the third door is the one you it's, enter through. You said that's in the back. It is, it's in the back, through the alley. You gotta come in through the back. So should we, should we, have you had a tour of this place? I've never been in this building. I have not. Well, do you, I've been here, so I've gone through it. Do you think it. it would be appropriate to, for your podcast? I don't think we can move. For your but we could try it. I'm not sure. What and you can hell? describe what you're seeing? All right. I mean, yeah, yeah. So we're in the garage section uh, that we talked about. And this is where you're going to have your Wednesday night event type things, correct? That's right. Yes, right. and we do. We call it the Jalopy Gallery because uh, we can imagine old jalopies being worked on in here. But yes, it's our garage space. All right, we're going to go up the ramp. They're uh, compliant with the latest. All right. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite aspects of our space. This is our art wall where we have a whole bunch of Prohibition era photographs. Do you get Elliot Ness up here somewhere? I, I love all the different characters, you know, these folks getting hauled off by the feds and dumping the liquor. Dumping the liquor. Those ladies look way too happy at the bottom. And then there's a looks like prohibition ended in that one. It does. Looks like the celebration of the end of prohibition. Cool. All right. And that's the bar area. And all right. So, and here we are at the bar. I, yep, here we are. What at is the, the bar? speakeasy? This right here? Mm-hmm. So we call this the, the Speakeasy Lounge because oh, okay. it's meant to have that kind of moody, dark, a little more intimate kind of space. These couches, couches. in here are kind of some of the hotter seats. No smoking, sometimes. right? No, no yeah. smoking. And the whole entertainment district of the square is, is supposed to be no smoking. So right. we Amen. definitely follow that, yeah. even right. on the patio. Well, yeah, it's a small space, but it's really cool, and I think that's part of the vibe. Well, what, a, what had occurred to me is cigars always go great with whiskey and bourbon. That's what I was thinking when I said that. And you're right, they do, and we've, we've had folks ask us if we could do a whiskey and cigar pairing right. kind of thing. Yeah. So, sadly, that's one thing that we'll not be able to, not be doing. Okay. to offer. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't have any more uh, anything else, Paul. I can't think of anything at the moment. All right. Well, thank sure. you so much, Laura, for your time. You have to get busy here. The things are starting here in a few minutes. Yep. Got a busy wise up night tonight. All right. Take care and uh, best of luck. And I hope folks check you out. And it's a super fun place to meet people and just hang out. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. There you have it. Laura Ferrer and her husband run the third door. It's thirddoor.net. Please check them out. They're a great place to relax after a long day's work. This is Bill Nowicki saying thank you for listening to Marietta Stories Podcast. Tell a couple friends about the show. Subscribe, follow, whatever you need to do to listen to more. We're coming up next week with a brand new show.